The sealed class hierarchies are really up there for me in regards to those really cool features in Kotlin. So I'm excited that in Kotlin 1720, there is a new feature currently in preview uh, that makes working with them even more smooth. And that new feature is called data objects. Those data objects add a new little feature where in hindsight, I actually kind of wondered why we didn't already have this for much longer. So let me whip up some code and let me show you what I mean. All right, time for a quick sample scenario. Let's say we are building a privacy aware messaging app. The way that I would approach modeling the messages class would be using a sealed class hierarchy. I've come up here with a few examples of messages. So for starters, you can just send plain image messages. Then you might also have scheduled messages that are only displayed at a certain time. And you might want to send more than one photo at once. So you can also have a combined message that just consists of a bunch of other messages. So instinctively, I would immediately turn all of these classes into data classes because then I get a nice string representation and all those other free things like a hash code function, copy method, and so on as well. Plus, it also just makes it easier to develop and debug code in my experience. Moving on, we have to add some privacy features. Maybe one type of message that just clears the whole chat on both devices and another one to straight up delete all contact information. I don't think these will have to carry any extra information or content. So this is the kind of thing that I would usually model using the object declaration, right? So just the object keyword and then the name without any parentheses as well as the sealed class that we're inheriting from. Okay, for our MVP, uh, that's all we need for now. So let's just instantiate a couple of messages and see what they look like when printed on the console. Let's create a basic introductory message and just say hi. All right, that one looks good. Now we can also do something a bit more complicated. Like here we could make a message that will only appear on somebody's birthday using the scheduled message object and then nesting an image in a local date. And this one also looks pretty concise and even contains a nice readable string representation of the date. So let's really go all out and make a combined message that both clears the chat and deletes the contact information that we have at the beginning of the next year. In code, that would look a little bit like this. We first create our combined message that makes sure that we delete the contact information and clear the chat, and then we schedule it for New Year's. Let's print this one and it doesn't look quite so good anymore. Uh, specifically because, well, the clear chat and delete contact information objects are in there, but they're not exactly nice to read because they contain their FQN, their fully qualified name, as well as the address of the object, which we're also not interested in, especially since in Kotlin, objects are singletons anyway. So how do we make this better? Well, we could override the toString function and manually give clear chat a textual representation and do the same for delete contact information. But looking at this code, it's not exactly great either, is it? Because look, we've had to manually repeat the name twice. And if you're prone to typos like me, that's just another opportunity of making a typo. And clear cat is definitely something else than clear chat. It also feels somewhat ironic uh, that the types of the messages that don't even have any actual content inside have the longest definition of them all. So clearly something isn't perfect here. And of course, there's plenty of people who have felt this way for a while, at least a couple dozen of them. That's how many people upvoted the issue on the Kotlin issue tracker anyway. So here is the good news. Soon we'll all be able to do better. And if we were a little adventurous, like I am right now, and we're working on something where using experimental stuff is okay, like I am right now, we can do better right away using data objects. So first, let's quickly enable them in our project using a little flag in the Gradle config. I'm just setting the Kotlin options language version to 1.9. Language version is something different than JVM target. Don't mix those two up, otherwise it won't work. But now we can do the same thing with object declarations as with class declarations. We could just add the data keyword. And 
Would you look at that? We can get rid of our manual two string override. So goodbye, clear cat. And we have some nice symmetry in our code with the other data declarations in our sealed class. Now, of course, clear chat and delete contact information are both stateless and singletons. So things like a copy method or component accesses, like you get them with regular data classes, don't make much sense for them. But at the very least, we can get a pretty two string implementation out of the box there, which means our output looks consistent with the other descendants of the message class. And that is exactly what data objects provide. So check this out. When I run this again, we can take another look at our scheduled combined message and see what it looks like right now. Ah, much better. I think that's exactly what we would have expected. It's concise and using the simple class name without any unnecessary extras around it. Beautiful. So to recap, in the not too distant future, when you have an object declaration and you want to make sure uh, that it looks nice and tidy as a string, you can simply slap on the data modifier like you're already used to with data classes and you just get that simple string representation right out of the box. So for now, we're aiming to introduce stable support for data objects in Kotlin 1.9, which means you have plenty of time to thoroughly try them out. Uh, as you can see, they are certainly not the most complex feature, but if you'd like to learn even more technical details and share your opinion, you can do so in the relevant Keep, the Kotlin Evolution and Enhancement Process document. Um, we've linked that down in the description. There's also a link to the relevant discussions down there where you can leave your feedback. Looking behind the scenes, the team has been in some pretty deep discussions about how best introduce this feature and what its final form should look like still isn't clear yet. So we'd really love to hear from you. That goes especially if you've managed to find yourself in a situation where you have a problem with data objects, then we'd really love to hear about from y'all before they're added in a stable manner. For me personally, I'm looking forward to getting rid of some custom two-string overrides in my code. Now there is a bunch of other stuff worth looking into that you can first use in Kotlin 1720. Things like a new operator to work with open ranges, inline classes that are becoming generic for the first time, and a bunch of other updates. Make sure you check out the specific videos on those topics as well as the overview that we've created for this. Alright, hope to see you over there. Y'all have a good day and y'all take care.